A lot of the time people ask me for tips and tricks with selling PCs. Today we're gonna to go through three different builds. What goes through my head when I'm going to sell some of these PCs and sort of a little bit of a vlog process on especially one of the builds that I picked up recently, the 5820K. And it does look a little bit sort of like it could use some tech yes loving. So that's exactly what we're gonna to give to it today. A bit of tech yes loving, but there's two other builds as well. One being a Lenovo build, which we're gonna take a look at there because I've never attempted to do a re-piece on a Lenovo case. And then also we've got the preparation of a Call of Duty PC, which probably might even get its own separate video too. Who knows? Also, for those wondering about the uh, $3 cooler, we're testing it right now on a build and it's running Unigy in heaven, super quiet. And this has been going for over half an hour. So we're testing the side panel off first and the temperatures are absolutely fine. And here we are with side panel on and nothing blew up. We're only running about two degrees hotter on average, I'd say, than we were before. And we've also got a really nice aesthetic. There it is, guys, the $3 cooler. And this is the test that I, I think of way more real world is how it runs in games and stuff rather than how it's going to actually run in a full Ida 64 stress test. And even then we've got airflow from these two front fans that it otherwise wouldn't have got on an open air test bench. So here's this build here, 5820K. It's the case is really ugly in my opinion. Uh, there's, it's a jungle sandwich inside and it needs a different graphics card. I had a GTX 770. So what we've done already is we've pulled 16 gigabytes of DDR4 out because having 32 gigabytes for gamers really doesn't give them any appeal and you're just honestly throwing money down the toilet uh, with the price of DDR4 memory. But we've also got the Fractal Design Focus G. This is a great case. I find, especially in Australia, you pick this thing up for sometimes on sales for under 80 Aussie dollars. Two white LED fans, white aesthetic, clear side panel breeze to build with definitely adds value to a build and then we can use this potato case for something else too but with that aside let's pull it all apart give it a bit of test yes loving and then see the final product so we just pulled this cooler off and there's a couple of things like this bracket just came off so it was just free balling on one side guy was probably having heat problems uh, and then we've got this white gooey stuff. I've never come into a batch of this stuff that's worked um, anywhere near decent. So it looks like toothpaste and it probably performs even worse than toothpaste. Toothpaste actually does a decent job in terms of thermal transfer. But anyway, hopefully all the bads out the way, we can get on with the good. And there's our build all ready to go. The SSD that came with it already had Windows 10 pre-installed, so we don't have to do any fiddling around. This thing is all good to go. There is the repurposed rig there. And now quickly after finishing this build, I checked some deals and an i7-870 whole system came up for $95. I clicked the buy it now button and then I put in the coupon code. So I've got this for $90 and it's just up the road pickup. So we're gonna go pick up this PC and see what we're getting for 90 Aussie dollars, which would be like under 70 US dollars, really cheap anyway. So I got back before it's really late and I realized that we're driving up the highway and we're 20 minutes up the highway and I didn't have the guy's address. And so I messaged him and he finally got back to me really late tonight. And so we're gonna go pick that up tomorrow. And yeah, just one of those things that happens. But uh, I've also been training every day, uh, going to the gym because I wanna get uh, look the best I can for the upcoming health video for you guys. I'm gonna be dropping that in three part series. But I'm gonna go crash out now and then we're gonna hit this up in the morning. And here we are the next day with the Lenovo motherboard. I got this in the recent parts hunt for 85 bucks. It's got an i3 in it. So what we're gonna do is take the i3 out and put in this little chip here, the i5-2400. Cause I do wanna test this in a few titles, especially with an RX 480. See if it can handle for instance, the latest fours of four. And uh, also this case here is gonna be a little bit of a problem. It is a Lenovo case, but it looks like it's from a different generation as we've tried to line up all the uh, sensor connectors and you can see that they use these proprietary connectors. So it is a little bit of a problem to get it working from the get go, but hopefully we should be good to go once we get it installed and it shouldn't cause too much problems. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So 
So here it is here now, it's uh, really messy, but that's just by default with the case. There's uh, really nothing you can do about it because these drives here, they have to face forward because there's no options on the back. Uh, it's just blocked off completely. And then we've got a lot of proprietary connectors that are just going all over the place. So I figured since it doesn't have a transparent side anyway, I've done my best to sort of minimize the jungle over here. And uh, yeah, it's still a little bit messy, but hey, if it switches on, then it'll be awesome. But on the note of switching on, I don't even know if it will because some of the proprietary connectors down here are actually a little bit different. So I've just plugged them into, <laughs> in and sort of hoping and praying that they'll work. So here's the PC here. It actually boots up. I was really surprised because uh, this connector, as I said before, I just plugged it in sort of on a plunge of faith. It's not really connected properly, but yeah, it was connected to the power button. So some of these other connectors, they seem to be working fine. The USB front actually works too. And the good thing is this graphics card here, the AMD graphics card, the RX series, works off of this board. And I mean, Lenovo have even gone in and put in a red LED fan. I'm really happy right now. So here it is here, here's the final product of this PC. It actually looks really nice, in my opinion, for a non-transparent side paneled case. I'm surprised Lenovo could actually pull something this decent looking off. And everything works, so that's pretty cool. We repurposed the case, so someone gave it away, it was just junk to them, so free case, and then the power supply is a budget power supply, and then we've used that $85 rig, and then that $180 RX 480 that we picked up in the parts hunt. So we've got ourselves a PC for around about 350 Aussie dollars here and it just screams price performance. And lastly up here on the desk is we we're gonna do this today but I figured some of these parts are really nice and since a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about this in depth, the overclocking on the six Gen i5s and since this apparently is a really good bin because it's low power consumption, I figured we'd turn it into a separate video. And with Forza 4 just being released, I figured this could be a Forza 4 PC. I mean, look at this case. Now that I think about it, it's not the prettiest case, but it looks like a bit of a race car. It's got that race car vibe. We'll get a Superman shot of it. There we go. With a bit of WD-40 in the shot. Look at that. Forza 4. There's a thumbnail right there. So now it's finally time to go pick up that i7 PC and check out what's inside. So we just got back now and here's the Dell Vostro and it's looking good. I mean, 90 Aussie dollars for all this. Absolute bargains, got that i7-870 in it. So we're gonna be doing a whole separate video with this where I've got some rather dubious plans to use this for something. So you have to stay tuned. But I know you guys won't forgive me if I didn't at least give it a phase one tech. Yes, love them. Here it is right here on the table, a brand new Dell Vostro. <laughs> Never been used before. I mean, come on, if that doesn't bring up the PC really nice, then I don't know what does. And here we are now with the conclusion of what should you do at different price points and different uh, PCs. And what I took you through today was sort of a little bit of a thought process that goes through my mind. I always wanna make sure that the case, the power supply, and all the other stuff matches the certain price point. Like you won't see me putting a really good water cooler in a $300 PC because that's not going to add value to the PC. And on the flip side, you won't see me putting in a really cheap cooler in a $2,000 PC because I guess there's certain expectations at certain price points. And now the easiest way to think of this is to start exaggerating the situation. For instance, if you're in the market for a really expensive car, it's $20,000 or more, you are definitely gonna be doing your research and you're gonna be searching everything. Does it have Bluetooth? Does it have heated seats? And you're eventually gonna settle on something that you want, whether it looks good or it has the features that you're after. And so you're gonna research that more. But then we go to say, for instance, a chocolate bar, $1 chocolate bar at the supermarket. You're not gonna think twice. You're gonna be like, okay, that looks good. It's gonna taste good. I've tried it before, $1, bang, let's get it. And so the thought process involved is very little. And so now this same consumer behavior can then apply to flipping PCs. On the low end, people aren't gonna be doing too much research. So they're not gonna really care too much about what you put in it. Of course, the better a PC looks at all price points, the better it's gonna sell. I guess that's a given, and you can get away nowadays with making PCs look good for cheap. But now that we're closing out, just make sure that your price points are there and match the parts. High-end builds get high-end parts, or even mediocre parts at best. Mediocre builds 
get mediocre parts, some maybe low-end parts, but make sure they're not too cheap. And then low-end builds, get low-end parts. Uh, if you're in a high-end build, for example, do not put low-end parts in a high-end build because most people will be doing their research at that higher level and will spot that out and then they won't be too keen to buy it. But anyway, guys, what we saw with those two builds today, the 5820K build, we changed the case around to add some value. We added a water cooler and now it's, in my opinion, a much better higher-end build that will sell quicker. The mid-range build, the Lenovo build, put in a mid-range case, matched everything up, in my opinion, it's looking sweet and it's good to go. And with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let us know in the comment section below. Do you have any tips and tricks of your own when it comes to sorting out different price brackets and different price ranges? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.